Hello, folks. So tonight, I am going after the Eagle Nebula. The, and in the middle of the Eagle Nebula are the Pillars of Creation. This is a really cool target. And I've already captured about five and a half hours of HA, and now I'm on oxygen. The mean readout is 877, and I am capturing um, four-minute exposures on oxygen at gain... 75 and offset 15. Um, I used to capture almost double that, gain 139, offset 21. Uh, but the mean readout would always come out too high uh, on that gain. So I thought you'd prefer oxygen anyway. So I thought I'm going to lower the oxygen, or lower the gain on oxygen, and double my um, exposure time. And I, I think uh, maybe it, it'll, um, it'll come out more in line with what I usually get for HA, maybe, and I can do longer exposures than two minutes like I was doing before. Now I'm going to do four minutes, and when you do longer exposures, you, you, you waste less time settling between frames and stuff like that, dithering, so uh, maybe I'll save a few minutes per hour. We'll see. But anyway, this is what one raw image looks like for oxygen, and there's the, the pillars of creation right, right there. And you can see um, uh, it was worse before. It's disappearing with each frame, but I've got some condensation right now. It, it was really bad when I first started. Um, it's so humid out there, my camera won't even go down to minus 20. I'm stuck at minus, what, 14 right now. It, 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 it's, it's clear, but whew, it's hot, hot and humid right now. And you can see I've got a, a nasty dust spec on my sensor. Um, that wasn't there when I first started a few days ago on the Eagle Nebula, but it is there now. And condensation seems to form around it when I get these uh, dust specks. And, and that seems to happen to me a lot, where big dust specks will drop onto my, my sensor. And I think that is probably a hazard of me rolling out my setup. You know, from the garage, when you put it on wheels and it, it vibrates and on bumps on the concrete, who knows what's really going on with your setup. And I'm always worried that something is going to just rattle too much, dust might move around on my camera, and then plop a dust, nasty dust speck that fell right on the sensor. That's what I think happened anyway, but since it's right on the edge, I'm going to crop that out if, if flats don't take care of that. Because I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to remove my camera and, and maybe make something worse by trying to clean that. I can handle that if I have to crop it. So we'll see. But that's all I got to share. I'll be back. So guiding is unusually good. For me, anyway, in the low south, 0.81 is about as good as I can get in this direction. So I'm surprised. And... The smoke is cleared. The 4th of July is over now. It's 12.45 a.m. on the 5th. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so I'm okay with uh, 0.78. And uh, by the way, July 5th is my birthday. Hooray! <laughs> but by the time you see this video, it, it, it will have passed. So anyway, um, I'll be back. Hey, I am back again and still collecting oxygen, and it happened that big dust speck moved closer in, and I had to take off my camera, clean it off, and put it back on, and um, looks clean now, though. I just wanted to show you how good it looks when everything is clean, so hopefully it'll last and I don't knock around any more dust, so I'll be back. Hey, I am done capturing data. Boy, that took a long time because I have so little time per night to capture this object. But we've had a string of clear nights finally. Can you believe it? But you just heard me talking about um, that uh, my the way I roll out my mount and maybe the wheels vibrate a little too much, you know, moving things around, maybe bouncing dust around in my camera sensor, let alone what it might be doing to my mount, what I suspect it's doing to my mount. But let me show you a possible solution for that. It, as, not just wheels, I actually put on some Celestron 
vibration suppression pads on my wheels, and maybe that will help reduce the vibration when I'm rolling things out. What do you think? It looks kind of weird, and it's more dangerous. My mount could slip up and uh, derail, as my friend Doug calls it. Um, but I, I, I'm going to keep doing that. I just have to roll it out a little slower, and maybe maybe that will help. And, um, uh, of, of course, I, I remove the wheels when I'm imaging. I, you don't want to be on wheels when you're doing that. But we'll see how it goes. It, if I go a few months or three or four months without seeing any new dust on my sensor, then I'll maybe I'll think this is why this solution is actually working. So uh, we'll see. So here's my HA data. I captured five and a half hours of HA. I capture around four hours of oxygen and around four hours of sulfur. And I think that was probably enough for now. I mean, I, I compared two hours of oxygen to four hours of oxygen, and I really didn't see much difference, in, not even in the graininess. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to stop there. And uh, one interesting thing with, between my data and all these filters is that the stars in my sulfur and my oxygen looked about the same size, but the HA stars looked a lot smaller in the not sure why that happened like that. So to fix that, I actually ran deconvolution on oxygen and sulfur to shrink those, to bring down the size on those stars, which actually then helped it match to the HA. I would have liked to have run deconvolution on HA. I know I could have made the image a little more crisp and sharp, but, you know, it is what it is, and that, that's what happened for that. Oh, and I wanted to mention one more thing about the oxygen data. Because I had to clean my sensor in the middle of capturing oxygen, I needed another set of flats. So I had the first two hours with one set of flats, and then I cleaned my sensor, and I had to recapture flats, and then the next two hours with a new set of flats. And um, So I had to sort of stack the data two different times, get all the calibrated frames together, and then run the image integration to come up with one final image. Um, a little, uh, one extra step really, not that big of a deal, but I, I did have to do that because uh, I was in the middle of capturing oxygen when that dust spec started giving me issues. This is my combine, and I use the SHO AIP script, and unlike my previous um, image, the Lagoon, I only ran combine once. Normally I do it a few different times to see see how things look, but I thought, you know what, I see the I see the gold, I, I see this sort of cyan greenish color there, and I'm pretty sure I'll easily be able to convert that to the blue that I was hoping for. So I just went with this. I didn't spend a lot of time on processing this one. Maybe I should have, but uh, let, me, let me show you what I've got here. Um, that that's that's what it looks like after that's the combine I rotated it and cropped it so I went from this to this it's probably not as sharp as it could have been I kind of learn how to sharpen things without destroying other things that's that's always a challenge for me and um, that that's the the final color version cropped and I also have a wide field version uncropped. So I'm not sure which one I like. I'm not sure which one I want to keep, or which one I want to print, or which one I want to put in Astro Bin. I don't know. Maybe I'll just put them both in Astro Bin. I, I don't want to give people too much to look at, then I don't want anyone thinking about it. Should I like this one or the other one or like them both? I, I don't I don't know. I don't like to make, you know, complicate things. <laughs> and I, I actually printed a a different version already because I liked I liked the the HA version only you know I thought that's cool sometimes when you just see it in mono I think that'll be a cool metal print right there as well so anyway that's my ego nebula the pillars of creation I think I am done and I'm probably going to go back to the Omega Nebula. I mean, I captured about 13 and a half hours on this object, but I only captured around three and a half hours on the Omega. And, now, and if I 
I can envision myself next year wondering, why the heck did I only capture three and a half hours on that? You know, I've got a chance to do a lot more and maybe a lot better job on that now, so I may as well do it. So, anyway, thanks for watching again, and I will see you later.